Welcome back. My name is Matt Reiners. I'm the co-founder of Eversound. And with me today is Julie Potowitz. Julie is the chief sales officer at Vitality Living, an author and founder of Grow Your Occupancy. My friendship with Julie is a few weeks old, but we became fast friends when we were tasked to operate the most efficient assembly line, if I must say, at Bridging the Gaps Ignite Conference. Julie's passion is evident in all that she does and knows she approaches things the right way. Her continued influence on our industry will help to raise all of our tides. Thanks for joining me today, Julie. Well, thanks for uh, having me on your podcast, Matt. And it's been great getting to know you. Awesome. Well, Julie, being that you're one of the goats of senior oh. living, and for those of the listeners that don't know what a goat is, it is a compliment and it is the greatest of all time. But I'm curious, can you just tell us a little bit about your background? Sure. Well, first of all, you cracked me up with that. And I'm thinking that the that title really only goes to people with like a lot of experience or a lot of longevity. So um, that uh, that I, I do have, but thank you. Um, I've been in senior living for about 15 years and I started as a community sales director and I, you know, moved through the through the you know career in my with my passion in uh, sales and teaching because so I started my career as a teacher I taught fourth grade and so the, the combination of that experience and my sales passion knowledge and results uh, lended themselves very well as a consultant so I worked on, on the consultant side worked in 46 states with many, many uh, clients and, and hundreds of sales counselors executive directors and, and helping them implement you know, sales systems and, and growing sales and occupancy. And then I uh, transitioned over to the provider side in 2014. And I've been there ever since, uh, both for profit and not for, not for profit. Awesome. And, you know, I think it's evident in all of our conversations, you're super passionate about sales. And I'm curious, you know, what is it about sales that motivates you or has kind of led you to have this career in it? I do have a passion for sales and I, I you know, for, for me, in my, in my opinion, everything is sales, Matt, you know, relationships, right. And, you know, you're, you're connecting with people, uh, you have natural curiosity. I, I know a lot of, you know, it's very common to say I like people, but I really do. And I, I love to learn and, uh, ask a lot of questions and that's in my nature, uh, with sales, I love going for the carrot. I've always been really motivated you know, from a young child and all the way through and that high, you know, when, when you get the win uh, is, is incredibly motivating. And I think in sales, you know, we have to be motivated by the loss as well and being curious around, okay, you know, pick myself back up and what do I learn? How do I grow and, and uh, win again? And so sales um, in senior living is, is the best because at the end of the day, the impact that the people in our business make and our residents, family and team members and associates is unmeasurable. So it's, a, it's truly a win-win. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that's what's, you know, because I, I agree, everything is sales, right? And I think when you kind of look at it as problem solving and building relationships and, and helping people, right? I think when people think of sales, they think of the used car salesperson and uh, kind of like the shady practices, but it's really not about that. And, you know, I'm curious as, as you've kind of grown throughout the industry and have worked with people in all sorts of different roles, whether and, and been one yourself, whether it's regionals or the community level, you know, what do you typically find are, are motivating some of those other people? Um, you know, I would say, Matt, you know, everyone has their own internal motivation. And when I interview, meet, train, and coach, uh, it, it's very common, the, the desire to make a difference, you know, to make that positive impact. And again, in senior living, uh, it's, it, that impact is, is huge. And the you know, the external motivation, again, is also individually, you know, uh, specific, but, you know, I mean, if, if, if you're not motivated by money, you shouldn't be in sales, right? So, you know, when I'm interviewing and hiring and building a sales team, and I'm looking for someone who, when I ask them what motivates you, um, I, you know, I want to hear, I'm motivated by the carrot, I'm motivated by, 
by money uh, because that is somebody who has that um, kind of personality or drive or, uh, pro, you know, I don't like the word profile, but that, that um, kind of makeup that's like, I'm going for it. I'm going for it. I'm going for it. You know, I've got six move-ins. Ooh, you know, if I get eight, look at what I can, what I can make. And I think a lot of people shy away from even talking about this because ugh, money is bad. Or ooh, if, if I say that, maybe it, the fact it, it might come across that I'm not a caring person and then I don't really love what I do and, and making that impact with seniors. Money is not bad. You know, revenue is, is a good thing. You know, we all need revenue to run our, our businesses and, and, and run our households. So, uh, you know, that it should, you know, I, that's what I look for anyway. And then also, I think for myself and, and people that I've, you know, worked with over the course of, of all these years is that um, the growth opportunity. And with, because senior living sales is such a high level sale, it's, it's really, um, you never stop learning and growing. And in regard to, you know, the, your, your ability, right, the skill set, because it is a challenge. It's a challenging sale. It's an emotional sale. It's also high cost, right? And we're selling something that most people don't want, right? So it's, it's, a, it's a business or it's a career for people who are really driven. They're driven by money, but they're also driven by growth, that need to learn and grow. That's what I look for as well. And that's what I've always been motivated by as well, because you never get bored. I mean, there's always something to learn. There's always something to practice. There's, you know, something to implement to, to grow your skill sets and your knowledge base. Yeah, I think you bring up two great points, right? I think when people talk about they're motivated by money, it's almost like a dirty thing to say, but someone changed my my interpretation of it is like money is a tool. Money is a tool to help people, those help people around you, help your family, help those that might be a little bit less fortunate and allow you to do more within the world. So I think, you know, getting out of this kind of cultural where money is a bad thing and then money is a good thing to, to help more is what it's all about. And then your point about growing and continuing to learn. I mean, that's, that's what helps me feel fulfilled. And I know others as well, because when we stop growing is when we, and, and stop learning is that we kind of plateau and that's where I think we start to have these negative, these negative feelings and stuff. So it's great that, you know, we really focus on those things here. Um, and so I know it's hot off the presses and I've got my signed copy right here. So if you see it on eBay, I plead the fifth on that. Um, <laughs> but uh, I'm curious, why did you decide to write a book specifically for regional directors of sales? I mean, writing a book has been on the proverbial bucket list, you know, for years. Uh, and I've tossed around a lot of uh, different topics, if you will, or, you know, where do, I, where do I go with this? Because there's a lot of great information out there, a lot of great books and, and resources uh, for sales, um, but not for regional directors. And in my experience, Matt, both from a provider and a consultant side, the regional level uh, the operator and the, the sales and wellness is the area that can make the biggest impact in our business. Yet, it's the area where least emphasis is placed. And from my vantage point anyway, it, it, it feels to me anyway that that regional is, is often just kind of thrown into the position or we're growing and, and you're a great, you know, salesperson or you're a great you know, executive director or, you know, wellness and your, your nurse and boom, you're, you know, you're going to be a regional. And the kind of uh, analogy that, that I think of as is teaching, you know, I was a school teacher, right? And a lot of times people who, you know, are teachers, they go back to school, they get their master's and they become principals. And the skill set, right, is for needed to be a teacher is different than a skill set needed to manage and, and run a business. The same thing with regional directors. So it's we're we're kind of taking somebody who's typically you know really good at what, what they do, and that that's certainly part of it, and kind of putting them in this position without the systems, the tools. You know, I'm sure there's you know there's some training out there, but it's you know it's a tr trial by fire hose, which you know it's, it happens a lot. So I I really feel passionate about this and building systems processes for regional directors 
And what I try to do is take it, kind of my, my visual is a bunch of squiggly lines. It's just like so much, right, that a regional is responsible for. And there's literally like so many moving parts. And what I try to do is take all those squiggles and straighten them out. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, so, and, you know, I show even a diagram in the book. It's like, hey, look, you know, it, here's, here's the problem you have. Here's some optional, you know, uh, you know, solutions. If this, then that. And I show it in a diagram, it looks insane. So what I try to do is say, okay, let's straighten this out so that we, the regionals can, my hope is that they can look at it, their business, like, you know, from, from a higher level, like, and look on the business and, and establish, right, uh, you know, their systems and processes for greater results. So that's, that's why I wrote it. Yeah, I think it's so important because to your point, right? Like some of the providers are growing at a growing like a weed, someone that's a really good sales director. It's kind of like the natural next position for them and helping to give that playbook again, will just help the entire industry. So thank you for for spending your time, your energy and, and putting some of, you know, some of your brain right onto the onto the book there. And I'll, I'll put a uh, a comment where people can go find it if they have not bought it yet. And if you're as lucky as enough to me, if you have it and find Julie, she will sign it for you. She does charge a nominal fee though, but uh, maybe she'll waive that. Just, just, just uh, real nominal, real nominal. Yeah. You, you got a discount since we were on that assembly line together. Per exactly, exactly. And so along with writing books, you know, I know we had talked about it a little bit, but I hear you're starting a new business. So before I ask when you find the time to sleep, can you tell us a little bit about your new venture? And why yes. are you making the change too? I'm curious. I know, I know. Um, super excited about this, Matt. Uh, I'm gonna jump in back into the, the consulting world after uh, seven years in the provider world. It's, it's really been a goal of mine, even since joining uh, Vitality and Chris, you know, CEO, and, and I had this discussion really, really in the first meeting back in, uh, when was that? 2016 and you know Vitality Senior Living was you know really a brand new company and we merged a tradition senior living a brand new company and we came together uh, to create Vitality Living and uh, we have uh, it has been a tremendous ride tremendous uh, relationships partnerships you know from you know from uh, the sea level you know on, on through the communities built to uh, from I believe it was eight communities at first to 28 and growing uh, really. Um, always really wanted to then take all of what I've learned from the provider side and jump back to the consultant side um, to, you know, share what I know and uh, what I know works. And, and, and that's uh, really with the experience that I've had working with, I think it's like thousands of people. Um, and then, you know, the, this last seven years, you know, I've developed a lot of relationships with people like you, you know, uh, you know providers who um, kind of, you know, provide, um, you know, services and, uh, you know, support in, in a variety of different ways in our business. And I, through those key strategic partnerships, I'm then able to say, you know, with kind of look on, you know, look on somebody else's business and say, okay, here are some areas uh, that I feel really will make most impact. And, you know, if it, if, if, if it's work, if it works well, I feel like that's a, a great key to unlock. Absolutely want to uh, create win-wins, you know, throughout the business, um, kind of meet people where they are and that, you know, small all the way through um, and um, help, help them. Uh, I think uh, Vitality and Chris, I mean, they're, they're great. Um, they're very supportive and, and, uh, having me do this and they are going to become my first client. So I'm not going away from vitality. And um, I just, it is a matter of fact, one thing that one of the many that I love about vitality and, and respect and admire so much about our CEO, Chris Gay is, you know, he, uh, he and I had a conversation this week because it's becoming real right now. Yeah. And he said, you know what? And, uh, he's already very sales focused CEO. Uh, and he said, you know, I want to become even better, you know, I want to, and so I want to be your first, you know, coaching student, and I, I want to set up coaching sessions with you, and I want you to tell me exactly what I need to do, you know, to become even a better sales CEO and or sales focused, and, you know, that, that mindset is so, is, is, you know, so motivating, and it, to me, and it's something, again, that I admire, 
so much about him and, and one of the many, many reasons, you know, he's so successful, Vitality has been so successful is that, is that mindset. And I'm so excited, you know, to, to get out there and, and uh, work with more like-minded and there's many, many, many out there. So that's why I'm making the jump. I love it. I'm so excited for you. And, you know, just talking to you here, I might be your second client <laughs> if you're not careful. Um, and it's, it's awesome to hear people like Chris, right, that are just super supportive, you know, CEO of Vitality that's really supporting you and, and wanting to be the first client and even signing up for some of that stuff. So, you know, kudos to him and just kind of the culture you guys have built there. So super important Thanks. stuff. Thanks. Um, and something I wanted just really quickly to add to, I think that while you don't have had to like work in every single position to be able to coach and train uh, somebody, I, I believe that the fact that I've sat in these seats, you know, that I've, in, I've done everything, but, you know, I've, I've, and I still, I still go to communities and, and do community sales and meet with families. And then, you know, I've, I've sat in that, that regional, I've sat in that VP role, I've sat in that chief marketing officer role. And it, it gives me, I believe, um, you know, great insight uh, to, to really understand what it, what it feels like to be in the weeds, right? Because that's what happens. Yeah. No, I love that. And I, and I know too, like you're, you're able to help vitality so much right now. And then also as you seek out this, like to your point earlier, you're going to be helping and just impacting that many more people and, and going about sales and doing some of this stuff in the right way. So, you know, I'll be, I'll be applauding you from, uh, from afar here and uh, cheering you on. And you know, so my last question here for you, Julie, because I mean, you've got new books, new businesses, you're obviously on top of it. Um, and I'm curious, where do you see the industry heading? And is there anything we can do to prepare for change? I'll start with the last thing. Well, I, you know, my opinion in, in what do we do to prepare for change is be open to that, to be open to that and to embrace curiosity you know um it, that that curious mindset that that allows us to step out of a comfort zone of i've done this a long time i know you know what i'm doing i feel very confident in that or this works and and so or it worked before and i'm i've had this much experience and it feels uncomfortable to maybe not know and to not have the answer and, and lean like kind of like step off the cliff a little bit and lean into our, our curiosity. And, and that will then set the mind up for change. People don't like change, right? And uh, it, it's, gosh, it's all the way through been making these big decisions to move to a community, right? Uh, what our sales, sales directors do and, and helping our families lean into, you know, that their discomfort in a big way to under, to see their, their whys, right? So I think that if we look at going back to everything is sales, uh, the kind of full circle, if we embrace that same uh, concept that we need to focus on our why, right? Why do we, wh what is our motivation to even lean into this discomfort of change? Um, I think to, you know, some literal things, I mean, catching up in the digital space uh, and, and technology. And I say catching up, it's, it's you know, it's keeping up. You know, it's really like daily changes. Uh, one of the things I think the, the, it, that I've learned over the course of all this, this time is pride is that. I mean, it's just been, it's incredible, um, the growth. Um, both the growth of, of the, our ability, you know, and then our, the, the growth of, uh, I mean, our, our ability to and our need to reach our customer, right, and, and our team members and technology like yours, you know, Eversound and uh, great technologies that support um, our residents, you know, our families and that ultimately help sales because we're helping our residents and that adds to another why, um, you know, we got a new customer base coming up and what is it that they want? Uh, we've, uh, at Vitality, we're leaning into the active adult space, the 55 plus and that's been, we've, we're, we've got our fourth community uh, in uh, lease up right now in Huntsville, Alabama. And that is, in, in my opinion, 
definitely that that space of growth in you know vertical in senior living. And you know, I mentioned it briefly before, but like integrating services. So really looking at what, what do we do, what can we do with the key partners, you know, partnerships, strategic partnerships, or even as as businesses uh, in in verticals uh, potentially. You know, what potential verticals to grow into? We uh, provide kind of that flywheel uh, of of service for you know our ultimate customer, which is our residents and our our families. So that's a little bit of where I see things going, and uh, the what I what I do for you know every day is is that reminding myself or getting myself into that that curiosity, right, and and be prepared for and open to the fact that we need to change for the change coming up, which is coming up tomorrow, <laughs> you know, in 20 years from now. I also, one last thing, cause you know, I'm super passionate about sales, Matt is, and, and I've given this so much thought in, in, in my career's uh, passion is around sales development, you know, and, and I you know, think that we've come a long way in the time that I've been in the space uh, about where, where we kind of help how we see sales in our business, but we still we still fear it, even the word. And a lot of people don't like that word. We don't even use that word, but we've kind of gone from, um, you know, the the uh, not even having sales directors or maybe having the, you know, um, engagement director or activities or social worker kind of be you know doing the sales. We really need to look at and, and embrace the importance of a true like true sales leaders. In our communities, at our regional positions, and our you know, in, in all the key positions, um, and, and how do we think about that, and, and who do we look for? You know, what kind of uh, tendencies, skill sets, um, I, I, and and that's where I hope to make at least a little bit of impact as we move forward in, in the business. I love it. I love it, Julia. You're such a, a wealth of knowledge, and just like good knowledge, and doing it things the right way. So I'm super excited for this, this next chapter in your life and just uh, excited for the amazing things you'll continue to do. And, you know, I want to thank you for joining us here today. And uh, I'll, again, I'll put a comment of where you can find the book in the or in the comments here. I'll put a link there. And uh, Julie, thanks so much for joining us. It's been my pleasure, Matt. It's great seeing you.